Hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning into this ASMR true crime, soft spoken. Today I'm going to be doing a suggested case. You guys have suggested so many cases and I want to thank you guys so much for that. I have this nice list that I'm going down, so if you suggested a case, I have it written down and I will get to it. Thank you so much. These suggestions have been really good. Some of the cases I have heard, some of them I haven't, so I'm really excited to be able to do the cases you guys want to hear. So thank you again for suggesting these cases and we will get into this one. This is the disappearance of Corey McKeague. So Corey was born September 16th, 1993 in Perth, Scotland. He had two brothers and at the age of nine his parents got divorced and he moved to Dunderfermline, Scotland. At the age of 15, he sadly discovered the body of his close friend who had been just killed on a train line. That is such a young age to experience something like that. His father believes it's around this time he starts to drink a little bit more and starting to engage in different behaviors. He attended St. Margaret's Primary School and St. Columbus High School. He joined the RAF in 2013 and was posted to the Royal Air Force based at RAF Huntington. He was a senior aircraftsman, gunner, and medic. He absolutely loved this job and what he did. He was described as very happy, independent, secure, all around a guy who was just really enjoying his life and meeting people and going out and living life. Around April of 2016, he began seeing April Oliver. So this was not an exclusive relationship. He was 23 and he was just enjoying his freedom and dating around at this point in his life, which I personally don't think is a bad thing. On Friday, September 23rd, 2016, He had plans with his RAF friends to travel from their base in Huntington to St. Edmunds to go out and enjoy a day off. This was about a 20 minute drive to which they planned to use a lift to get back and forth. Corey ended up missing the lift ride with his friends, so he had to drive himself. So around 10 p.m., he takes off in his car to the area of Bury St. Edmunds. He finds parking in a lot that's off of Robert Bobby Way, which required either payment to start in the morning or the payment expired at 9 a.m. Either way, he would need to move his car before 9 a.m. to not get a ticket. It seems the plan was for him to leave his car overnight, catch a lift back with his friends, and then come back in the morning to get his car. So around 10, 10 p.m., he called his brother, and they talked for about a half hour. At this time, he's in his car pre-gaming before meeting his friends at the bar. At 10.50 p.m., he joined his friends at a bar called Sobar. They continued to weather spoon and then ended their night at a nightclub called Flex. 
As with many people, after many hours and many bars, Corey is feeling pretty drunk by the time they get to Flex. He was asked by the manager before going into the club if he was okay and if he was drunk, to which he replied, yes, I love you. He then proceeds into the club and about 30 minutes later, he's sitting at the bar just being loud and the obvious drunk person in the room. He's not being disruptive or aggressive or anything, he's just clearly drunk. Will Hook, the doorman, comes up to him and tells him he may be a little too drunk to stay. And Corey agrees and leaves on his own. Corey goes on to say that, or Will goes on to say that Corey was no trouble. They actually went out and had a little chat outside of the club. When Corey leaves, however, he is separated from his friends who are still inside of Flex. This is something that's pretty normal for Corey to leave off on his own, do an Irish goodbye while they're out. He's confident and outgoing, so he had no problem just doing his own thing after a night out. After this, Corey is captured on CCTV, which shows him first heading to a place called Pizza Mamma Mia, which is about 500 meters away from the club. And this is his usual late night spot after drinking to grab food. Mine in college was a guy in a cowboy hat selling hot dogs on the side of the street, so... But, anyway, Corey orders two burgers, one kebab, and chips. At 1.20 a.m., he is seen on CCTV walking down the street, passing different bars and shops, where he then stops in front of an electrical store called Hughes where he sits down on the curb and eats his food. He actually ends up falling asleep for a little bit while he is there. At 3 a.m. he wakes up and texts his friend, just about a memory from another night when they were clubbing. He then gets up and starts walking around. At 3.20 a.m. he is seen on CCTV where he walks into an area that is referred to as the Horseshoe Area. It's the area that is located behind the stores where the back doors are, and numerous wheelie bins are located for their trash. So different trash trucks, delivery trucks, would utilize the space to get access to the back of the store. This is the last known footage of Corey, and he is never seen on CCTV located outside of the horseshoe coming out of the area. There is a good amount of CCTV in the area that would have potentially picked up another sighting of him. So the following next day, it's the weekend. At this point, people are assuming he is recovering from a hangover or just doing whatever he does on his days off. On Monday, September 26, he does not show up for work, which alerts those around him. They report him missing, which begins a search in the area around Bury St. Edmunds. The Suffolk Lowland Search and Rescue Team joins the police. The RAF also brings out their own search and rescue team to help with search efforts, as well as police helicopters to scan the area. They search in ditches, the side of the road, anywhere he could have potentially had an accident, and there's no sign of anything throughout the search. They continue scanning the CCTV footage and also look into any residents that have security cameras, there ends up being around 2,000 hours worth of CCTV footage that they looked through. At this point, police speculate it was nearly impossible 
for Corey to have walked out of the area after the last sighting of him going into the horseshoe. They also see that Corey never picked up his car, which had the risk of the parking ticket. No sightings or footage was discovered along the route from Bury St. Edmunds to the RAF Huntington. Although it was very common for Corey to leave on his own from bars, his mother says he had never walked back to Huntington previous, so this would have been very unusual for him to walk that route. Police then examined his phone records to obtain the information from the towers to track his whereabouts. They discover that Corey's phone received data 90 minutes after he was last seen. It's located in Barton Mills, which is about 13.1 miles away from the Horseshoe. They see the phone got between these two points in 28 minutes, which is not possible by walking. So the phone had to be in some kind of vehicle. At 8 a.m. on the 24th, his phone stops transmitting signals, which either means it was turned off, died, or was destroyed. So in the CCTV footage where Corey was last seen going into the horseshoe, there was about four vehicles seen going into the area around the time he disappeared. Police identified the four vehicles that went into the loading area, which included a garbage truck, a delivery vehicle, and a vehicle owned by an employee of one of the shops. Police are able to obtain the records from Biffa, which was a garbage truck company that tracked, that was tracked in the area. They're able to see that this truck had gone from the horseshoe to a landfill located in Barton Mills around the same time as his phone. So at this point, there begins this belief that Corey may have fallen asleep on top or inside these garbage bins and then was picked up and killed without the driver having any knowledge. Apparently, its friends did say on multiple occasions Corey had fallen asleep on top of the bins. The truck used on this route had a weighing device for documenting the amounts at pickup. Biffa initially told police the weight of the bin was 11 kilos on the 24th and therefore not heavy enough to contain a person. It was later recorded and discovered that the accurate weight was 116 kilos. So the average weight during pickup was about 20 to 30 kilos. So 116 is way out of normal range. Corey weighed about 90 kilos which would match up to what was recorded for 116 on top of the normal weight. So due to this mix-up, police do not search the landfill initially. Police also discover there were about 39 people in the CCTV footage. At the same time, Corey was in the footage which could mean that there are 39 possible leads or information on what happened. 23 of these people could not be identified, so police reach out to the public to help identify them. After this, 13 of those were able to be brought in, but unfortunately all these led to no additional information. The other possibility police begin to work on is that Corey had maybe gotten a ride home, maybe by someone who drove into the horseshoe, or maybe he got a ride outside of it, but 
something that would show that he was not located by CCTV because he was in a car. Family and friends do say this is a possibility. Corey would have no problem getting a ride from someone at the end of the night. But no further information is founded to support this. In December 2016, it's revealed that his bank and social media accounts had not been touched after his disappearance. Many searches continue in the various areas with no trace of Corey. On December 17, 2016, they officially end the search, and I'd like to note at this time they still have not searched the landfill. At the end of December, a large reward was out for anyone who could provide information. At this point, Corey's mother is extremely frustrated with the lack of answers and the lack of initiative and approach by police. There were apparently three men that were seen lighting a car on fire, which caused immediate suspicion, especially after the possibility that Corey had gotten into a car. So after much push from his mother, police finally investigate this incident, which turns up with no connection to Corey's case. But there continues to be so much frustration that police aren't looking into any possible leads and have yet to search the landfill. And then finally in February 2017, police begin to search the landfill. By May 2017, it's revealed that the search had cost Suffolk Police about 1 million pounds, which is about 1.2 million dollars in the US, and that it would take longer than expected, which was at first an estimated 10 weeks. This makes this case one of the most expensive missing persons that Suffolk, why do I keep saying? So folk police have ever dealt with. Now this is weird. A human skull was found at the site in April 2017, but it was found to be that from a female and dated back to before 1945. Police do manage to trace the person who threw this skull out to the landfill and they deemed that there was no suspicious circumstances, but if you're throwing a skull out from 1945 into a landfill, there might be, I don't know, a little, a little suspicions, but anyway. So on June 5th, it was announced that police were finding, quote, items from the right time, that in the right place of his disappearance, but by the end of the search, they had looked through 94,000 tons of waste, and there was no sign of Corey or his cell phone. On July 21st, 2017, 20 weeks into the landfill search, Detective Superintendent Katie Elliott announced at a press conference that the search of the landfill had come to an end with no positive results. In January 2017, April Oliver, his girlfriend at the time, announced that she was pregnant with his baby. Neither she nor Corey had been aware of the pregnancy at the time of his disappearance. She had given birth to their daughter, Ellie Louise, on June 11, 2017. In 2019, his mother states she believes he may have been picked up by someone and was never located on CCTV due to the lack of discovery that there was any evidence that Corey had been in the bin, trunk, or landfill. They did do some DNA um, samples in these areas and nothing came up, so she just feels like there wasn't a possibility that he was in that. It's also kind of frustrating because in the landfill, they appear to be very, very close to where Corey's body would have been, 
if they were finding receipts from the area and the time. And it's just frustrating that nothing else came despite them clearly being very close. Um, so there was like about five cars that went in and around the area of the horseshoe before 7 a.m. that you know, some believe may have come in contact with Corey. His mother also goes on to say that apparently police did not look at footage past 12 p.m. of that day. So they only looked at about a 12-hour window of footage. So maybe there's a possibility that Corey did walk out of the area or got into a car just later in that day. But Corey's father really holds on to that belief that his body is somewhere in the landfill, sadly. November 2020. It was announced that a full inquest would be conducted after requested by the family. The inquest began on March 7th, 2022. It was finished on March 22nd, 2002. And the, it concluded that Corey had died after climbing into a commercial waste bin which was then tipped into a waste lorry. In the narrative conclusions, jurors said that he had died at about 4.20 in Bury St. Edmunds as a result of, quote, compression asphyxia in association with multiple injuries. His death was, quote, contributed to by impaired judgment due to alcohol consumption. Corey's mother is interviewed later, stating, quote, The police have gotten it right. Corey did go into the back of the bin lorry, and he did end up in the landfill process somewhere. She said that she had, quote, really good, honest conversation with police chiefs following the outcome of the inquest. The relief that we have as a family after them having a conversation with us was huge, she said. The police are quoted as saying, Suffolk police have learned from this, and hopefully there will be things that we'll be able to share with people that will prevent somebody else from going through some of these things. His father states frustration with conspiracies that's around the case and misled people, and he hopes this answer will allow him to rest in peace. After watching some videos that were made prior to 2022, it feels like because the mom was still holding on to this belief that maybe he got picked up, the possible belief of another alternative outside of an accidental death was a little bit more prevalent, and I cannot blame his mother. This is such a tragic loss of a 25-year-old that I think you just want to make sure you have all the possible answers. And there were so many leads going around, so to not just jump on that, I can understand. So we will go into some of the theories that were existent. The first one, of course, and the main one is that he had gone into the bin as the police concluded and that he is somewhere in the landfill. The other theories are that maybe Corey intentionally left on his own or that his job with the RAF was a contributing factor. There was a report that he maybe did take some antidepressants at one time, but he was not on them in the currently during his disappearance. And he was apparently back to his happy self. There's also extreme doubt that he would have left on his own Due to his happy mood at the time, he was making plans to meet up with his brother on the night that he went missing. He also booked flights for a Halloween trip. His mother also points out that he loved his seventh-month puppy 
which we kept at the RAF Huntington, and he would have not left the puppy behind intentionally. Investigators that look into the case later also examined the area to see if it was possible that he scaled the buildings, which is why he was not caught on CCTV. This was proven extremely unlikely. Due to the height of the building, there was pigeon spikes, drain pipes, and the fact that he was not Spider-Man. The next theory is that there was foul play and an involvement of a third party. That maybe he had met someone or he angered someone who he had taken a ride from and was met with foul play. There was a bread delivery driver named Roy who claimed to have possibly seen Corey at 4.30 in the morning in the Barton Mills area, running across from the A11 right in front of his van, wearing similar clothes as described for Corey. Police never looked further into this possible sighting, so nothing comes from this. I find it interesting that this guy claimed that he was seen in the Barton Mills area, which is where the land mill was located. So I guess with this, it's the possibility that he somehow survived getting placed into the truck, which... I saw report and report after again there was like a 5% chance of survival if you were to get picked up by a trash truck while in a bin. So it seems like it would be very unlikely that he would have survived that. But maybe he, I guess, I guess some people could say that maybe he was, got a ride, um, and then got a ride to the Barton Mills area and then somehow was in that area. But uh, there was also an anonymous report that suggested that he had been seen being sick in the back of a taxi on the morning he went missing. Police do rule this out after interviewing the taxi driver twice. Police also interview a man who did a three-point turn with his car inside the service area. He told officers he had been in Bury St. Edmunds trying to cash, trying to get cash to pay his boxing coach. Detectives, quote, drew the conclusion he was actually trying to get money for an escort. And because of his employment, it was against the rules. So he may have lied about getting an escort, but there was no indication that he had any involvement. I think it's really important to note that Corey's father has been extremely outspoken about his criticism towards these other theories. He says the facts have never changed and he wants closure for what happened. I think now that his mother has agreed that that's what happened to him, there is this more idea around the closure that this was an unfortunate accident and Corey had been in the landfill um, and they just weren't able to locate him. I think the fact that his phone is tracked along with the, the trash truck, the fact that although they did provide an inaccurate weight at first, they then did come up with 116 kilos, which would match Corey being in this bin. So it seems like that's now the conclusion that everyone has accepted, which is so unfortunate for this family. Um, there was a full report that was made to, quote, prevent prevention of future deaths in relations to ineffective locks on bins. They examine ways to ensure secure locks on bins to prevent people from getting into bins and not being able to get out. They are now do not enter and danger of death stickers on containers of the trash containers. 
So that is the case of Corey. I think it's really tragic. He was 25. Um, you know, he was about to be a father without knowing. I hope the family at least has a grandchild, a nephew a niece that they can connect with and have a part of their lives, but uh, thank you so much for watching, thank you again for suggesting this case. I did get a comment about a possible Q&A, if anyone is interested I would definitely be down to answer some questions if y'all have it, I'm pretty open, um, so feel free if you guys are interested let me know. Um, but thank you again for watching. I hope you're having a good day or good night wherever you are. And I hope you have a good day tomorrow. And I will see you in my next video.